Hey y'all, welcome back to the farm. My name is Susie and I'm so glad that you're joining me today. In today's video, I have 10 thrift flips for you. Now, when you thrift store shop regularly like I do, it is very easy for your stash to get out of control and have way too much stuff. That is where I'm at at this point. So I told myself no more shopping until I got halfway through my stash and got some stuff out of here into my booth. With that being said, if I am not shopping, then I am not making money in my booth. So I have to get this done. I have to get this stuff in the store to sell so I can go shopping so I can make money in my booth. For these items, some of them, I'm just gonna be showing you what I paid for them and a before, what I did to them with an after picture and how much I'm going to be selling them for. Some things I'll be giving more detailed description, but for everything, I will try to link in the description box below the products that I use and where I got them. So if you guys wanna try some of these thrift flips, you can find the products to use. Please don't forget to like this video, share it out and comment. All of this helps my YouTube channel grow which really needs to happen so that I can continue making videos for you guys. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let's go ahead and get busy. I hope you have a great day. I found this beautiful stainless steel tray at a thrift store for $3. This is gonna be an easy flip. I just cleaned it up and I'm using one of the floral transfers from the Iron Orchid Design Ephemeral Transfer Booklet. These transfers are so pretty and this come off so easy on this stainless steel and I absolutely love how it turned out and hopefully it will sell really quick in my booth. I think mom paid two dollars for this metal art and easy flip all i did was spray paint it white distress it and seal it in and it's already in my booth and i love the way it turns out it's not going to last long i fell in love with this tray that i found at a flea market for four dollars it's made out of resin and there was a little bit of damage that i had to repair with some air dry clay i'm using this new paint from rethunk junk one of the other vendors in our store carries this and i wanted to support them so this is my first time trying it out um, be sure that you clean your items, even if you don't think they're dirty. They are a lot dirtier than you think. This took a couple of coats of this paint, and I did it on the front and the back. So far, I'm really liking this paint. This is the powder color, and just look how smooth it is. After the paint dried, I distressed it slightly with some sandpaper. Um, I will say that this paint does not wet distress well, so you have to really kind of rub at it. I didn't want a lot of distressing on this, but I did want to bring out some of the detail. Once I had it all painted and distressed, I felt like it just needed a little bit more. So I had this transfer left over from the Brocant booklet. It's just some French wording. So I put this on the tray and I absolutely love the way it turned out. I wanted to keep this all along, so I will be keeping this for myself. I 
I may have become slightly obsessed with this Rust-Oleum Stone spray paint. If you remember in my last video, I used this on one of the wine bottles. It was a darker wine bottle, so it came out a lot darker. This one, I sprayed an undercoat of white on it and then did two coats of this stone spray paint before sealing it in. And I just love the texture on this. I cannot wait to use it on so many more things. What seems like ages ago, I thrifted this wooden paper plate holder and I never did like the front of it, but I knew that I wanted to use the base. So I took it apart and of course I will save the front part and the wooden dowels because you just never know. So I'm going to make a cutting board sign out of this. I like the wood color, but I decided to um, just richen it up a little bit with some of the antiquing wax and water mixture, and that just made the color just perfect. While the wax dried, I cut out a cute little saying stencil with my Silhouette Cameo 4. Since I'm using it as a stencil, I weeded out the words and adhered it to my transfer paper, rubbing it with a little tool. I use an inexpensive makeup sponge to put three coats of this white acrylic paint over the stencil. When it was dried, I pulled up the stencil and weeded out the spaces in the letters. I have a few leftover scraps from the painterly florals booklet so i put some lavender on this because it's almost summer and lavender is a huge seller and i just love the way this little sign turned out This hanging anchor that mom had had for many years turned out so great with just a coat or two of paint and distressing. And then I just put the rope back on it and it is so pretty. All along, I knew that I wanted to put a bird song mold on this. So I used the large bird and some IOD air dry clay, glued it to the floral box, and then I did spray paint the floral box with some black spray paint. I'm just using some grayish paint. I want to give this like a cement look, so I mixed half and half with the baking soda and paint, and I just gave the box a couple of coats. Look at all this amazing texture. I love the baking soda and paint mixture. I wanted to 
bring out all the details with some dark wax. So I started with the antiquing wax and quickly realized that it was too dark. So I went on to the antiquing wax and water mixture and I just put that all over the box and then wiped the excess back. I forgot to mention that I did put a coat of clear wax on and let it dry completely before doing this dark wax. It just gives you a little bit more control when you're wiping back, um, but it's very easy. If like even where that is too dark, if you don't like it, you can just go back in with some white wax like I'm doing here to take some of it back until you get it like you like it. Just keep playing with it. I love the way this box turned out. It's very old and antique looking now. several of these cabinet doors that we had left over from our kitchen remodel. I've already filled all the holes with some Durham's water putty and sanded it down. And I'm just gonna give it a couple of coats of this Dixie Bell caviar paint. And then I'm gonna make another stencil. And here I am weeding out the words. And if you are not a patient person, this is probably not a project that you will enjoy. For me, I actually like doing this. It's just very relaxing. It takes a while and it's a little tedious, but it is so worth it in the end. I got all these words weeded out and then used the tool to transfer it to the transfer tape and rubbed it with my little tool to get it to stick. This reminds me a lot of the um, applying the transfers from the transfer booklets. If it doesn't stick to your transfer paper, just lay it back down and rub on it some more until it does. And eventually you will get it all off. I've already sealed the cabinet door with some polycrylic and now I'm just going to center this stencil in the middle and give it a few coats of the white acrylic paint. Once the paint had dried, I used my heat gun to help the vinyl um, remove without taking off any paint from the cabinet door. And then I just lightly went over it with a sanding block, 220 grit sandpaper, just to take the edges down to where it did, wasn't raised so much over the whole cabinet door. And I did not really like the stark white of the paint, so I went over the whole cabinet door with some antiquing wax and water mixture and then rubbed it back. And I really like the way this sign turned out. I might be keeping this for myself if I ever get to my laundry room makeover. One of my most favorite things to find at the thrift store are watercolor art 
and this one was $3.99 and it was so pretty with so many beautiful colors. I actually preferred the frame if I was going to be keeping it for myself, but since my brand is sort of painting everything, I went ahead and picked a color that went well with this artwork and I was choosing between three different ones. The one I finally settled on is Moss, the Waverly Moss chalk paint. So I just put a couple of coats of chalk paint on it. I did not tape off the glass. I, I find it much easier just to get a little paint on there and then scrape it all off. And then I just made my homemade uh, white wax with a little bit of clear wax with a little bit of white paint in it. And I went around after the two coats were completely dry putting on the white wax and then wiping it back off and i just this is just such a neat way to make any frame look super nice and this color ended up going perfect with that artwork For my final project, I have had this mirror for, I am not kidding, probably 25 years. About 10 to 12 years ago, I got the bright idea. I was going through some kind of phase with bright colors, and I painted it this bright blue tur turquoise color, um, and it has been stored away since I did away with that, and I've got it back out. I am going to give it a couple of coats of the DIY apothecary paint because I figured that the high pigment in that would be really good enough to cover this blue. I was able to get it covered and then I'm doing the same technique as I did on the frame with some white wax, wiping it back and this mirror is complete and now like a brand new mirror. Gonna show y'all a quick recap of all the projects I did today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite of the projects today. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video so we can grow my YouTube so I can continue making videos. Thank y'all so much. Hope you have a great day.